uh, start with your why. Because one of the things that people who haven't started yet don't realize is it's really, really hard. The process of creating something, building it, sustaining it, it it's really, really tough. You're going to get hit by a lot of challenges. And if you don't have a solid why, you're just going to give up. So having that clear why, having a very strong why, that's really the key because then you'll be able to overcome you know, the house, basically. Hey guys, welcome back to Small Talk, Small Conversation with Huge Impact. My name is Alec Cuenca and I'm your host for today. And before anything else, gusto ko lang muna magpasalamat sa lahat ng tao na nandito ngayon. To all the people who clicked on this episode, it means a lot to me. I am very, very grateful sa lahat ng tao na nandito ngayon. Lalo na sa mga tao ang nagsishare ng podcast sa kanilang IG stories. The podcast is growing because of you guys. So, thank you. Thank you very much. But today, today we have a very special episode because today... We have a guest. Hindi lang ako ang mag-share ng aking thoughts, insights, and wisdom sa inyo. I have a very special guest that I am very excited to talk with. I have a lot of questions that I know that can help a lot of you in terms of adjusting your mindset and building your brand. Our guest for today is the president and co-founder of Early Bird Breakfast Club, the pioneer all-day breakfast club located in BGC, Makati, and other places. He is also the CEO and founder of Antidote Brand Divergence Inc., a brand venture studio that specializes in brand strategy, brand identity, business development, content strategy and creation, and social media marketing. He has also launched his own podcast wherein he interviews different entrepreneurs and brand building individuals such as RJ Ledesma, co-founder of Mercado Central, Joey Alviar, co-founder of Team Manila, Coach Chot Reyes, James Deacon, Joy Spring, and many others. He is dedicated to help Filipino brands get to their next level. So please, help me in welcoming serial entrepreneur and the host of the show, Kendrick Loves the Brand, Mr. Kendrick Ko. Welcome to the show, Kendrick. All right, thank you, Alec. Thank you for that uh, great introduction and thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us. I know that in times like this, kahit na nandito tayo sa crisis, I know na marami ka pa rin ginagawa as an entrepreneur, you know. Pero yun nga, marami marami salamat na naisingit mo uh-huh. dito sa oras mo ngayon. So, a little background lang. Kendrick and I met sa isang group sa Facebook, sa Podcast PH. And when I first saw his podcast title, Kendrick Loves to Brand, I immediately clicked on it. Kasi I love topics about branding. Isa sa mga idol ko si Gary Vaynerchuk and he talks a lot about branding and so I just alam mo and alam ko lang yung yung importance magkaroon ka ng isang strong na brand kaya nung nakita ko yon kinliko agad at pinahingang ko siya and kahit nung intro pa lang I was really hooked na let's go back para naman makarelate itong ating mga okay. podcast viewers natin how do you define a brand for you what is a brand a, a brand you know there are a lot of definitions out there but uh, for me simply a brand is a set of associations or perception that a consumer has of your product. So it's it's not necessarily the logo, it's the name, it's a combination of all these things and what what all of the imagery and the name and all of that com- combined, what it represents in the minds of the consumer. I think that the easiest way or the 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 best analogy that uh, that I, I always use for my for my clients or when when I give talks is Think of branding, or in think think of the mind of your consumer as a series of parking spaces. Mm-hmm. So for every parking space, which is could be a keyword, could be a category, could be a product, there's a particular brand that first that will occupy that space. So for example, if I say something like sports drink, automatically most of us would probably think of Gatorade. Gatorade yeah. right? If you if you think of uh, you know, let's say soft drink. Automatically, there's a brand na naisip natin lahat. And most likely, it's Coca-Cola, di ba? The, the, the way you think about branding is, it's not necessarily your logo, your name. It's a combination of all these things. And use using all of those elements to try to occupy a parking space in the mind of your consumer. Okay. Kasi the, 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 the hardest part in branding is when, for example, so let's take Gatorade as an example. This is one of my favorite examples kasi... Gatorade is, is a pioneer in sports thing. They basically mm-hmm. created the category. So the best way 
the best way to create a brand is to be the first something. So if you're the first sports drink, automatically you're associated with that category. So it becomes easier for you to establish, you know, market leadership because you're that category. So uh, case study in Gatorade, Coca-Cola, actually the big company, now they've done well with their own brands. But with regards to sports thing, they have their own sports thing, which is Powerade. Mm, now, so yeah. Powerade has spent literally billions of dollars over the past, I don't know, decades now, uh, trying to overtake Gatorade. You know, try, it's basically what they're trying to do is try to replace that car, Gatorade, in that parking space in the mind of people. And telling people, "Ne alisim mo yung coach na yan, kame yung lagay mo jan," mm-hmm. which is almost it's, it's almost impossible, very very improbable. Because the the way the way our minds work, you know, with with all these messages that we're bombarded daily, it's so hard for I mean our brains would literally will go crazy if we try to process all the messages that are bombarding us. But we think we think we're not brand conscious, but just go on your day-to-day lang na lives. You'll be bombarded with a lot of messages. And that's even before social media. The way the way our minds cope is we try to you know, parang put things in place. For example, uh, yeah, that's why it's easy for us as humans na, okay, this is my relation to this person is, this is my mom, this is my dad. So it works in the same way. When, when you think of that, it's the same way. So it's hard for you to say, wait, this is not my mom. Diba? Now, this person mm-hmm. will be my mom. It, it's hard for us to make that connection because our minds already sort of simplified that. Na, okay, ito na yun. So, yung brand itong tao na to is mom. Brand itong tao na to is dad. This is my best friend. This is ganyan to. This is ganyan. Diba? So, uh, the same, it, it, it's the same with brand. So, for example, yung Gatorade na, they've spent billions like nung Beijing Olympics, they sponsored the Olympics. They cost them billions and billions. But still, after all of that, like, you know, after all the campaigns and you, know, you still can't overtake Gatorade when it comes to being the sports drink. I mean, they have some market share, but they won't be the dominant, you know, player in that category unless Gatorade makes a mistake and leaves that parking space unguarded for a while, you know, which has happened also up. sometimes. Correct. So that that's really how uh, that that's probably the simplest way to look at branding. So if you want to create a brand. You really have to think of what parking space can I create in the mind of the consumer? What can I occupy? Na, you know, will be open for me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, on a more personal level, uh, ako, mm-hmm. I created Small Talk. Like it's a brand mm-hmm. na gusto share. It's a part of me, and essentially, it's the same with all other podcasts. Same stuff, recording, upload, and all that stuff. Pero yun nga nak- nakita ko ngare na yung mga tao nga they created this space. So, yun ang parang isang dapat tanggalin ng mga, ng mga, ang gusto mong mag-create ng sarili nilang brand. Na pag inisip kasi namin, ako, for the longest time, I didn't want to create my own brand kasi nga, I thought na, hindi, ang dami na niyan eh. I mean, meron na agad, may isip ang ibang tao. They're associated, their their experiences and their emotions and their feelings to some automatic brand na nandiyan na sa labas. So, gusto ko lang din i-put it out there na do not be afraid na makita mo na you can create your own parking spot when you create your own brand. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. The, yes. Yeah, yun nga, nabanggit mo nga na you have a company called Antidote and yung Antidote, mm-hmm. it specializes in brand-related um, services and, you know, nung nakita ko yun, I thought na, okay, you are in the service of helping other people's brand. And for me, it was really interesting kasi other people, they create their own brand. They try to grow their own brand. But you, you created a company that helps other people's brand. So, can you take us back on the, on the time where you decided that you have this passion in helping other people's brand? The short version of it, the a, a bit shorter version, so we don't have a lot of time to do So, uh, I, was in, I was in advertising for less than two years. Um, mm-hmm. so I took up marketing communications in college. I finished my master's in UANP. Um, but, Back then, even back then, when I was in college, uh, I was already leaning towards branding. Um, but it just wasn't, it wasn't an option yet for me at that time because the course, our course itself, was heavily geared towards ad, ad agencies. Na, mm-hmm. If you graduate from our course, you either go to the ad agency or client side. Uh, but I, I've always been into branding, like even back then. Uh, whenever I go to bookstores, even when I travel, when I, when I visit book, bookstores, I always gravitate towards 
the branding, the branding aisle, the design, uh, design books. Even if I'm not a designer myself, like I always had an appreciation for that. Uh, so when I was in advertising, I uh, worked there for less than two years. Um, it was a great experience, but I I had this yearning. Uh, this is this wasn't what I wanted to do in advertising. So I really wanted to to pursue branding. So I left advertising. I started looking for uh, branding agencies that I can apply to here. Uh, it was just that at that time, uh, a lot of the well, most of the quote unquote branding firms at that time were more into market research. So they have brand, you know, brand something. Yung mga pangalan nila, but market research talaga sila. Not so much yung sa creative side, yung strategic side. So um, I was considering, you know, moving to another country to find work. Uh, let's say in the U.S. or Singapore, uh, but you know, I I I also had this option. Now, what if I just start something on my own? It just so happened at that time, um, my dad had a friend or or a client for for plastic manufacturing who was asking him about you know uh, needing a new label. So I just overheard that conversation and asked my dad, "Can you can you tell him if he's willing to you know, to give me a chance? I'll 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 redesign their label for them." So I got one of my friends from college to work on it together. So drang mura lang ng project par, parang ten thousand lang yata. Sinigil uh-huh. namin just so we can just get it. And just with that first project, nyan quote unquote project, parang it made me realize, oh, parang bakakaya ko naman. I mean, I mean, granted, this was like a sort of easy sell because the client nung dad ko na ten thousand lang. So, uh, but going through that experience of talking to them, you know, getting what they needed, and then being able to design something that they like uh, with the help of my friend. Um, Yeah, it gave me the the courage to to pursue it on my own. So when when I started Antidote, that was 2008. Um, no experience in branding. I was 20 23 years old at that time. So yeah, then the next start, and then uh, it took me a while, like a few months, you know, to finally sign my first client. Uh, because the way like the way Antidote is different, because like we're not just looking to design your logo. Uh, the the vision for the company, the vision that I had for branding is to use branding as a tool to help build the brand of the Philippines. So when, whenever I give talks, this is one of the things that I always encourage, like aspiring entrepreneurs or or brand builders, um, to think of your work as something that contributes to the Philippines. So um, most of the time here in, in our in our country, we're we're very much used to. You know, seeing a foreign brand come in, you know, we're very excited. You know, it's mm-hmm. it it's so easy to make news like that go viral. Now, oh, so and so brand is coming in. Um, uh, open it until next month or or wherever. Um, because we're we're very much a world class type of consumer as Filipinos, you know? So any any global brand that wants to expand to Asia, for sure, the Philippines will be one of the keys key countries uh, initially because alam nilang we can appreciate any brand where wherever it comes from anong concept yan we'll be able to appreciate it fast you know, whether it's luxury item tech i mean look i mean look at tech lang we're, we're in terms of adoption of facebook twitter instagram tiktok mabilis tayo sa ganyan diba kasi we're, we're world class consumers but what what we want to 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 encourage us is to think of ourselves as also world class creators Because in reality, right now we're not. The the things that we create mostly are made for the consumption of the people here in the country. So very limited the market natin. So if you think about it, um, I mean obviously I'm not I'm not an economist or anything, but I I kind of feel like if you look at the the economies of our neighboring countries that uh, are very much ahead of us, like Japan, the number three economy in the world, um, South Korea. And these are countries that, growing up, we hear all all these stories. That oh, nung panahon ni Marcos, nung 70s and all that, South Korea was devastated by the civil war. Diba? Japan was after the Second World War. But look at where they are now in such a short amount of time. It's because if you look at their economy, it's powered by global brands. Diba? Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, if you look at the top Japanese or South Korean brands. Their market is not just Japan and Korea. Diba? Their market is global. Diba? Uh, yeah. A lot of us have like LG appliances at home and gadgets and Samsung, and uh, we drive you know Japanese cars. We have Japanese gadgets and diba? even fashion. Uniqlo. I mean, we all you know love Uniqlo here in the Philippines. Diba? So, if you think about branding in that point of view, 
yung market nila will will always be a lot bigger than us market for their brands is because they're catering to a global market whereas tayo we're catering to 109 million Filipinos but kung yun lang yung, kung yun lang yun ng market natin it will it will be harder for brands here to grow and you know consequently even like the value of um, like our employment here diba kasi market one dito lang now if you look at if you look at brands now, let's say like you know, let's say uh, Toyota, for example, or or Samsung, mm-hmm. they're catering to you know almost probably you know hundreds of millions and billions of people all over the world. So the value of the the jobs that they're providing, they're creating for their people, is also much higher. You know, so that that's been that's always been the vision of the company. So we uh, we started by working with different clients, because thinking namin is we can't do it all or on our own. So Better is if you can work with as many clients as possible, create as many brands as possible that can start here and hopefully go to other countries. Then that mm-hmm. will be our way of contributing to nation building. The work that you're doing with Antidote is probably one of the reasons why there's a possibility that we can match other people's brands outside the Philippines. Because yeah, for so for so long we have that mentality na and daling mag-consume lalo na pag, pag galing abroad galing ibang bansa pero hindi lang nakikita na we have all the resources that we need we have all the minds that we need and if we just know how to properly manage those kind of resources and malaking malaking exactly. pag-angat ng Pilipinas ang maaabot natin so your work exactly. your work in antidote is really really amazing yeah so that's exactly the key part what you mentioned the resources diba? we are very rich in natural resources it's just that we're Historically, we've, we've focused on exporting the natural resources yes. as raw materials, which is, of course, not worth much because it hasn't been processed, it hasn't been, you know, uh, branded and marketed. So, like, the way mga, um, and, and that, man, like, so, there's so many cases here. Like, if you look at our cacao beans, uh, we ex- mm-hmm. we've been exporting that for the longest time. Um, and then brands from Switzerland, of course, would buy it, process it. And then sell it back to us, the uh, na branded, yeah. and then we're you know we're happily <laughs> consuming it. We're not realizing it's actually grown here, so which is good because now there are a lot of local chocolate brands like um, Oro, uh, Reese's Chocolates, uh, Simalagos. Na they're, mm-hmm. they're actually promoting Filipino branded chocolates. Na hindi lang yung cacao. I mean, they're promoting the cacao, but not selling the cacao itself. They're selling the the the, the finished product, the branded product. Yeah. So that's that's wow. actually good. So it's 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 uh, uh, what what you mentioned, right? It's too high praise, naman to say na, or it's antidote doing ano. Parang like yeah. there are a lot of there are a lot more brands now doing it. Uh, it's just that when we were starting out, parang hindi masyado, hindi pa masyado ganun yung mindset. But I think now this new this next generation of entrepreneurs now uh, have have been more mindful of that fact. Um, let's now talk about your podcast. Okay. Because uh, a lot of traditional businessmen and older entrepreneurs don't believe that they think that putting your yourself on the internet is too millennial, right? So I want to ask you when I when I saw your podcast, I was like, okay, this guy's different, and I I, I want to ask you, what made you put your brand on the internet? And what do you think is the importance of creating content, the, the podcast, the videos, for your brand? Okay. Uh, actually, to be honest, I'm I'm actually a a, a shy person. Uh, <laughs> I'm an, I'm an, I consider myself an introvert. Uh, but I do love you know meeting people. Um, so for, first, I I love you know I, you know like in in my line of work, I've always been meeting people. Um, and talking to them about what they do, ganyan, um, learning from them. Um, as an entrepreneur, I've been doing this for 12 years, but I feel like I feel like you know, I'm still sort of at the beginning of my journey as an entrepreneur. I feel like there's still so much to learn. So every time I meet somebody uh, at an event, or if I meet, even if I meet like a supplier for for Early Bird or or one of the companies, like if if there's a chance to ask them questions to get to know them. Um, you know, I always take advantage of that. So that's one. Second is I I've always loved podcasts. I've been listening to podcasts since like as in the early years. As in you know, 
Hmm. Sobrang... Hindi pa sikat yung podcast. Oo, uh, as in, hindi pa ganito ka-convenient. Wala pang podcast sa Spotify, wala pang mga anchor and all that. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts na from before. And I've always loved being able to have access to like entrepreneurs from other countries that I really look up to and and to get to hear them raw on audio. Na it's not sanitized. It's not like a it's not like an article in a magazine that's been edited and chopped up and presented in a very sanitized way. So when you hear them on a the podcast, they're cursing, they're talking about their problems, they're talking about, you know, all the struggles that doesn't make it into, you know, like a nice PR piece, diba? So uh, I've always loved doing podcasts and it just made me realize that you know, I'm, I'm already talking to a lot of people uh, and a, a lot of times when I talk to people and I, and I hear something and, and we get to have a nice conversation, I always end up saying to myself, I don't record to you. Usapan, yeah. Kasi like, yeah. uh, I mean, there's some things that I want to go back on. Because like when you're talking to to another person over lunch or something, you're not gonna man gonna pull out a notebook and start taking notes while you're talking to them. Anyway. You're just talking. So it's uh, it's just a way to combine two things that I really enjoy doing. You know, talking and meeting new people, learning from them, and also a podcast as a medium. So uh, it it that's just you know. But like I said, I'm. You know, I'm a bit reserved as a person, like putting myself out there. It's not usually my my style, so it took a while for me to to get past that barrier. Also, like my own personal barrier, because like I'd be happy to do it if I didn't have to post it. Okay, okay, lang din sa akin eh. I just record it. But of course, you know, if you're gonna go through the process of recording it, might as well, you know, share it with so that more people can benefit from it. Right? Yeah, I love I love how you said like you're doing two things that you love. At the same time, you're 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 talking to people, and then you're creating the podcast. And it's not actually creating. And yun yun lagi sinasabi din ni Gary Vaynerchuk. Now you're not creating; you're just documenting. Yep. And a lot of people are really interested in the progress, not actually the, the pinnacle of success. Ko ni mga abut man on, but they're actually more interested in how far you've come and and the progress that took you to where you are ago uh, where you are before to where you are now so that, that, that's just you know an amazing answer lang. thank you when I saw your podcast nauna kong ang una ko agad napansin the people you had on your podcast it's not just people na in-invite mo lang it's some, some podcasts you know especially starting podcasts they, they invite whoever they can invite and nung nakita ko yung podcast mo the, the, the people you had were already established and notable brands, notable names, entrepreneurs and businessmen and and the influencers alike. And I want to ask you that in behalf of the the people like me, I personally think that I'm just a small uh, starting creator. I'm just a small starting podcaster, and building communications is a daunting and an overwhelming task it seems for us for starters so i want to ask you how did you build your connections and how do you think other brands or other you know starting content creators can can build their connections okay uh i guess in, in a lot of ways it's because like I, like i said i've been doing this you know um, i've been being, i've been an entrepreneur for 12 years uh so i've I, I built a lot of connections and my and my network through through the years. Just being, you know, in the industry, like whether it's um, brand designers, whether it's other entrepreneurs. Um, so in a lot of ways, uh, I think that was an advantage for me, given that they already know me as, you know, a fellow entrepreneur or a fellow, you know, brand designer or brand creator, uh, even before I started the podcast. Um, but for for anyone who's starting out, it's really just being patient with it. Um, you you can't you can't land like you know a big guess without sort of building building up building momentum about having that credibility um, and a lot of times um, it's just really reaching out to you know the people you want to reach out to um, sometimes you know if, if they're very busy if they're if they have a lot of like followers and all that, unless you have like a direct you know uh, contact with them with a number or some or an email. Uh, sometimes you you won't get noticed, but you just have to take a to take a shot and just you know reach out. Uh, a lot of times, ob- obviously, when you reach out, it it also has to sort of you also have to be sort of mindful of what value you're gonna give them as well, because obviously 
they know that you're trying to get something from them diba? like whether it's a mm-hmm. meeting or uh, you know whether you want to send a proposal or let's say for a podcast you want to interview them um, they know that you're going to get a, the benefit if they say yes so obviously you also have to to put in like what you think they can get out of it um uh, like in my case for example the the people that I've reached out to in the podcast because not all of them I are, have I had relationships with prior um but uh some of them that I don't have relationships with it's really more of telling them reaching out to them telling them what I you know admire about them um and it has to come across as authentic obviously you can't just say oh i really admire you can you be the guest on my podcast so like <laughs> uh, as much as possible you know I, i try to reach out to people that i really really admire and i really want to pick their brain um and i tell them you know like uh, i admire this about you and i feel like you know i want to be able to ask more about this so that you know more people can know your story or to know about you know how you how you did things uh, or how you started this uh, this business or this venture and you'd be surprised because a lot of most people would actually be you know looking for that opportunity to share their story uh, i guess you know un- unless they're like the type na sobrang uh, saturated na sa media exposure you know but oftentimes you know people people would want to have a chat and and get asked about you know what they did how they did how they did things you know Uh, so it's really just you know a matter of trying it out. There are, you know, there are for everyone that's agreed to come onto the show that I haven't met. There's you know more that, parang nakasin zone ka lang for now or they're uh-huh. they're too busy pa now or something. Uh, so you know, I, I guess don't let that fear of rejection stop you from at least giving giving and shooting your shot basically. Diba? Wow, I, I love how you said, like even they leave you on scene parang wag kang madidismaya yeah, so sometimes okay. busy lang talaga sila and just keep on okay. trying keep on pushing that okay. eventually meron at meron kang ma- makukuha and may invite sa and and also i guess it's oh, it, it's to, to add to that you know i guess it's it, it's two ways eh, diba? I, either you build your brand let's say if it's a podcast or a media outlet diba? or let's say a blog for example before podcast parang dati it was a blog diba? or blog. Um, or a vlog Let's say you want to invite somebody on your on your channel or your podcast. Um, you either it's either you build up your your channel or your brand to the point where there's credibility that they know that if if they appear on the podcast, you're gonna get value. But it's also good for them because you have an audience already. Uh, or if that's not the case, then you can also just maybe start off building a relationship um, slowly with with whoever you want to be your guest uh, and. You know, maybe not ask for. You know, having any Gary Vee, it's not. You don't ask right away. Right? Jab, 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 right hook. So that that can also apply to to building a connection. You know, try to give value. Uh, if it's a creator that you really like their work, you know, leave a comment. Uh, when they produce something that you really love, you know, just build that connection with them, and then eventually, when you feel like, you know, there's a relationship there already, uh, you can finally ask for. Hey, you know, I've I've been a long time follower, and they'll know because they've seen you. You know, engage with them for a long time now, Mangalan. So I think that 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 can also be uh, a way to to build that relationship. So being patient with the process. Also. Okay. Uh, one thing you said was uh, to build credibility for starters. How do you build credibility as a brand? It's it goes back to thinking of it with the long term view, because uh, you can't just build credibility from the get go. You know? Nobody knows you. Mm-hmm. You're new, so the only thing to your advantage is you're new. Gonna, oh, so there's this new thing, um, but to build credibility is to be able to communicate what you stand for, and then they'll see that, you know, over time, you're very consistent with what you stand for and what you're the benefit that you're providing or the value that you're providing is consistent. Right? So, for example, if you're talking about that podcast, uh, si Gary V actually talked about this a lot. I think two years ago, he had this challenge, man. Because he's been he's been talking about creating a you know like encouraging people to go into podcasting, so he threw out this challenge: na create a podcast and once you have 10 episodes, email me and my team and I'll be a, I'll guest on your podcast. <laughs> so what people did was just go crazy and just record 10 straight episodes, bara bara para lang may invite siya. I think some were lucky enough na he really guessed, but he soon realized na I think a lot of people were just doing it for the sake of getting him on the podcast and hopefully that will 
that will be the catalyst for the show to grow. So he stopped. He stopped. Uh, he stopped um, honoring the deal. Pero so yeah, I guess if you want to build credibility, it's that doing doing what you're doing for the you know really for the sake of being authentic to what you want to stand for. So that's how you really build credibility. You can't just say I'm this, and then after like you know two three months, parang nagu waver na yung yung commitment yeah. to to what you said you're gonna do. Yeah, I, 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 I too believe that credibility builds over time and you just gotta be patient with it. You've worked with brands, right? You've worked with brands a lot of times. So let's try to mix it up a little. What do you think is the most common reason why brands fail? Hmm, okay. Uh, I think if you, if you can boil it down to just one major reason, it's really um, not being able to connect to the consumer. So yeah, nice. at the end of the day, whatever you're creating, you're creating it for someone. Right? Unless you're an artist and you're just, you know, painting or creating for yourself. But oftentimes you're creating something for somebody else, right? to benefit, to to answer their problem, to solve a pain point. So um, at the end of the day, if a, if a brand fails, it's you can really boil it down to that, right? not being able to address the need of the consumer, uh, whether it's a product itself, whether you're not able to. You know, deliver the product, or your, you know, your, your patron, your customer, your customer cannot find you. you know, then you're not addressing their needs. So if you really boil it down, it's really just that. Uh, if you're not addressing their problem, if you're not solving their problem, then you're really irrelevant. You know? Any product, any service, you know, any personal brand, even even our own podcast, uh, we're here. We exist to serve somebody. You know? So if we're not able to do that, or if somebody else is doing that better than us, then they deserve to win. Right? So if you look at you know what makes a brand successful, it's that eh? they've been able to answer that need. Now if uh, if you look at the big brands in the world, not only are they answering the need, but they were actually the first, usually the first. Eh? So going back to that idea of the parking lot, they were the first to answer that need. And then they just keep serving that need over and over again, consistently improving their product regardless of other competitors who are coming in. So as a customer, I mean, if you're happy with this, if this brand is solving your problem, even if may mga bago, you might get swayed to try that new thing, but you're going to go back to the to the market leader because for you, it still solves your problem better. I mean, that's that's the purpose of an entrepreneur, right? You create okay. value with your services or your products para mas maraming tao ang mahinabang sa, and mas maraming tao ang matulungan mo. Okay, let's try to be more uh, personal. I got like a few more questions left. Okay, sure. What motivates you? Or who is your like biggest motivator? Uh, it's going to sound cheesy, but uh, you know, my family, my wife and my son, um, pretty much everything that I do, you know, I always think of, you know, how will this affect them? How will this benefit them? Uh so you know, when when whenever I do something you know, successful, remember it's for their benefit. You know, whenever I fail, I always think of, am I failing them? Uh, so at the end of the day, it's really that you know, because it, it it's not like I'm not doing like obviously I have my like my vision for why I do branding you know, to help country and all that. But um, you know, if you boil it down to the simplest thing, remember at, at the core of it, um, you know, everything I do, what motivates me to to get up and work. And do all these things. It's really to, you know, to to be able to provide for my family the life that I think they deserve. Wow. Okay, that is nice, and that's not cheesy at all. I mean, <laughs> even when they 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 speak about their family, their loved ones. I I I nila say that they they want to sound like they're this um matapang and buong buo na yung, yung masculine uh, no, na thing. No. Pero, actually, na itaw ngayon post mo sa Instagram. You were uh, picturing yun ng anak niya sa airplane. And yeah, yeah, you were just na na lungkot ako na nakita ko yung yung post na yun. I was like, parang sana matapos na rin tong COVID para makabalik na sila sa mga pictures, sabi ko ganun. <laughs> okay, let's let's round this up. I know okay. you, you you probably answered it sa mga sagot mo kanina, pero let's just be clear for for our audience, for the listeners. If you could give one advice to people who want to start their own brand, what would it be? I think you have to really start with your why. Um, it's a, it's popularized by Sinek, the way you start with why, and that's really where you should start because 
you know, don't do something because uso, don't do something because it might be cool, uh, you want to be, you know, fa- famous or uh, you want to get rich. I mean, obviously, all these things should be byproducts. Lang, right? If you do something really well, you really get rich, you get paid for the value that you're providing. But um, anyone who wants to start something, whether you want to create a product, a service, you want to create a podcast, you want to create, you know, music or art or anything, uh, start with your why. Because I think one of the things that people who haven't started yet don't realize is it's really, really hard. The process of creating something, building it, sustaining it, uh, you know, going through the ups and downs, especially like this situation, for example, with, with the pandemic, um, it's really, really tough uh, being an entrepreneur, being a creator, you know, really doing something meaningful. It's really hard. You're going to get hit by a lot of challenges. And if you don't have a solid why, you're just going to give up when times get, you know, rough. Um, so having that clear why, having a very strong why, that's really the key because then you'll be able to overcome any, you know, the house basically. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that answer. That was an amazing advice. I suggest now if you are listening, if you're trying to start your own brand and you listen to the podcast, put that down. Start finding your why. And I believe that when you have your strong why, you can overcome any struggles or setbacks. Thank you. Thank you for that answer, Kendrick. But before we end this podcast, I would like to invite you to a little segment that I created it's it's a i call this segment real talk where you will answer in just one word or one phrase or e- on even in one okay. sentence Basta isa lang. so i'll ask you you jump right away with one word one phrase or one sentence okay okay uh-huh. name a person who you would want to talk to dead or alive oh steve jobs <laughs> steve jobs okay next if you would be an animal what would you be wow uh Wow, uh, a shark. <laughs> a shark. Why? Why a shark? Okay, alam ko sabi ko one word lang. Pero bakit? Uh, my, my my son my son loves sharks. I, I've always been fascinated with sharks, and uh, I, I'm actually afraid of being eaten by a shark. But you know, I I don't want, I'd want to explore like the depths of the ocean, and I think being a shark would be like the best animal to do it because be, the other animals would be afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> Um, if you could change one thing in this world, what would it be? Oh, wow. Uh, I think it's making sure that everyone finds their purpose in life. Nice. Para hindi na sila maligaw. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, last two. What would you tell your 18-year-old self? Oh, wow. One word or <laughs> or one phrase, one sentence. Parang cool lang, ah. <laughs> uh, there's so much I want to tell. I mean, I mean, obviously there's a lot of um, uh, like a lot of the experiences. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really change anything. Uh, but if I can go back and talk to my 18 year old self, so 18 year old, and I'll probably tell him to follow his heart about branding sooner. <laughs> Okay, I think. that is nice. Okay, last question. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be known for? Oh, okay. Um, well, I guess when it comes to like my life's work, uh, you know, I'd want it really to be uh, to be said that I played a role. It doesn't have to be like the major role or you know, like um, just to play a role in helping make our country you know, more world-class than third world. Uh, and aside aside from that, obviously, like I said, uh, family is important to me. So you know, I'd want my family to remember me as a, you know, a good husband, good, good dad. Uh, that really means a lot to me. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kendrick, for those wonderful answers. <laughs> this has been an amazing experience for my first time. My first ever guest is a podcast. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you, Alec. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be your first uh, interview. Pleasure. Maraming maraming salamat ulit, Kendrick. 
that's all we have for this episode. If you like this episode, please do not forget to share this on your IG story and tag me on at Small Talk Podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review para rin umangat angat tayo sa podcast charts sa self education and self improvement. So yun lang. Again, maray maraming salamat Kendrick and maray maraming salamat sa lahat na nakinig na yung episode nato. Yun lang. Talk to you guys next episode. Peace. All right. Thank you guys.